All right, welcome back Greenfoot programmers. This is Michael again, and we are continuing with our um, bouncy ball project. Last time I promised you to do a little bit more with graphics and image manipulation, and that's what we're going to do. We are starting off where we left off last time, where we have here a program where I can click into the world and that places some bouncing balls into the world. Um, if you haven't played along previously on the blog, uh, you can download this version of the program, it's called Bounce version 1 um, to start with and you can use that as a starting point for what we're going to do today. So what I wanted to do is I want more variation with my balls. At the moment I have, uh, I don't know what it was, five or six or so fixed images with different colors and the balls can switch between those colors but I want the colors to be even more random. So what I'm going to do is I will get rid of the images and not use fixed images but instead draw the balls myself. There are two different ways, two different things how you can get an image for your actor. One is you can use an image file which I, we have assigned here, the blue ball. So we have used an image file for the actor so far and you can of course as you have seen use multiple image files. We have seen here in our change image method that we can use the set image method to set a different image which has a different file name. B so we have used different files here for the different colors but the images all came from files. We want to change that now. So what I'm going to do now is I will not use a file for the image at all but instead I will just draw an image myself. So I'm starting in the constructor and I'm creating a local variable of type greenfoot image um, that I call IMG for image and I can create a new Greenfoot image here um, and if we look up the constructor, so go here to the main window and go to the Greenfoot class documentation and look at our Greenfoot image class we can see the constructors. We have a constructor for Greenfoot image that constructs a Greenfoot image from another Greenfoot image that actually takes a copy we have one here that goes from a file name, but here, this is the one we want to use now. We have a constructor that just takes two ints, an int for the width and an int for the height, and it will create an empty, that is transparent image with a specified size. Um, so we have to decide here how big we want to make it. And let's just um, make that a maximum of 100 pixels. I don't want to hard code the 100 here. Instead, what I'm going to do is I put in a constant, a constant here. Constant is written like this. Private static final int. Uh, and then I call it max size and I make that 100. This is a constant declaration. Is in some, in some way similar to a variable declaration. It has the word private here. It has the int and the name and a value initialized. It has two new things. That's these two new keywords we haven't seen before. Well, the static keyword we have seen recently. The static means that this is actually held by the class and not by the object. So all instances of that class will share this value. And final means it can never be changed. I'm setting it to 100 here and it can never be changed afterwards. That is why it's a constant. It is good style to use constants instead of the numbers directly in your program text because then you can later change your mind and quite easily change the value. If I decide my balls should be bigger or smaller later, I can change it easily here. So I have to give the width and height and because I want it to be circles, let me just copy this here and you can just paste it. Um, I make the width and the size the same because the circles are same width and height. So this gives me an image of that size, 100 by 100 pixels, but that image is entirely invisible. So if I now were to use that image, I can say set image and I use this image as my image um, that I've just created here. And then we try that out, we compile this and then I run this and I click here, I see initially nothing at all and that is because that image I click a few more times, I see first nothing. That image is initially entirely invisible because I'm getting here an image of that size that is completely transparent. So it is 
know, like a piece of glass that he looks right through. And then later, when the ball, it will floats invisibly to the edge, and when it hits the edge, it changes to the different color that's still happening, so it gets the image back. So essentially this changing the image at the edge I want to remove now. I don't want that anymore. In fact, I don't even need the whole change image method anymore. I'll delete that. So I will not change the image. If I compile that now and try it out now, if I click now, nothing seems to happen. In fact, I am placing balls in the world, but they all have an invisible image. But I can now draw onto the image. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking the image um, and I want to set a, um, a random color. So I want a set color method. Um, you can see if we have here, if I do code completion, there is a set color method of the image object that um, takes a color parameter. So I do this. Okay, sorry, slight interruption here. Um, there was I had to cut this movie at that point because my daughter just came running into the room, <laughs> so I just interrupted my recording. And I'm picking it up again here. Um, where was I? We were just doing the color here, and we had seen a parameter of type color before when we did the same thing for the background. We can see here, uh, we can remember we had to import java.awt dot color to work with colors. Oops, spelling error. Um, we can also look that up. So if we go into the main menu in here, there is the Java library documentation. The color class doesn't come out of the Greenford library, it comes out of the standard Java library. And if we go there, um, we will see the whole Java library. It is very big. There are thousands and thousands of classes. We will later see a few more of them. Um, Java AWT is the package that we're looking at now and there are other AWT classes there all to do with graphics and GUI interfaces. Here's the color class and if we look at that we see there are some constants for colors and here are all the constructors for a color and the one that we want to use is this one. We have a constructor for a color that allows us to put in an RGB value. It is uh, three ins RGB that stands for red, green, blue. So we can give a red, green, blue component to make up a composite color and a fourth parameter called A. That's what's called an alpha value. An alpha value specifies transparency. So it tran um, uh, specifies how solid it is or how see-through it is. So this will specify the color value, those three, and that will specify transparency. So we need to pass in four int values for our color. And I want to make my color random, so um, I will here um, get random values for it. So I get for my red value, I call it R as well, as well for red, because RGB are very commonly used names for these three color components. So here I say greenfund dot get random number and the color value is from 0 to 255. So I give it 256 as the limit and then I copy this three times and I say I get a different random number for the green value, for the blue value and for the alpha. So I've got my RGB value and my alpha and all are random numbers out of 255. And then I can here for my, my set color say new color, I create a new color object with my RGB value and my alpha value. So here I've created an image, I've created a random color. I set the color for my image to this new color and now in my image I want to draw a circle image. So there is a draw and if I do a uh, where is it? There's a draw oval. There's no draw circle, but there's a draw oval. And in the oval, I can specify um, the location where on my image I want to specify and the width and the height. And I can make my oval a circle just by making sure that the width and height are the same because then the oval becomes a circle. So I draw it at um, in offset of zero, 00 onto my image. So that's the offset on my image. So I'm drawing it at the top left corner of my image. And I, how wide do I want to make it? Actually, I want 
the size to be random as well. Now let's just let's just make it the max size first. So I copy this, um, I make it maximum size, and I set that image as my image. Um, have a random rotation. Let's try that out. Let's compile that, run it, and now I click, and nothing happens. Oh, actually, if I look really closely, something happens very faintly. Some circles are drawn here but the circle isn't filled, it is an outline of a circle and that is because I've um, used draw oval and draw only draws the outline. What I actually want is fill oval. If you look at the documentation of the Greenford image class you will see there are me methods to draw and to fill and draw will only draw the outline. So let's compile that again, run it and look. Yeah and this time I get every time I click I get um, randomly colored circles moving around. That looks a lot better. These are all the same size. I want to make that sort of slightly more random artistic looking. If I want more randomness, I can na I currently have the color being random. I can also make the size and the speed random. So instead of using max size here, I can say I declare a no local int variable called size and I get another random number where max size now is the limit so I take a random size up to my maximum size and I copy that and here instead of making the oval of max size I make it out of random size up to my maximum size and the last thing I want to then also make random is here I'm setting my random colored image now setting the rotation and there I do an end speed at the moment we are moving with a speed of four we are always moving four steps forward instead of moving four steps I will make this variable I say I'm moving speed and that is a variable that I haven't declared yet it won't work yet but I can declare that and because here this is used in a different method than the constructor here I want to set it in the constructor but I want to use it in the act method that is why it actually can't be a local variable because if I make it a local variable here, um, it will not be visible. Um, it will not be visible in the act method. So instead I make it a field. I say here, private int speed. And in fact, the image number I don't need anymore because I have removed my images. And then here I declare a, an instance field speed. And there I say um, speed, I'm using my random number again, lots of random calls here. And now I want to make the speed something, it was f 4 before, let's, let's make it up to 5. But actually, if I, do, if I use a 5 here, the speed will be between 0 and 4. I never want the speed to be 0, I never want them to be completely still. So how can I achieve it that the lower limit is not 0? Well, it's quite easy. I can just add one to it. And if the random number is between 0 and 4, random number plus 1 will be between 1 and 5. Okay, so I'm assigning a random speed here. And then here where I move, I use that speed for my movement. Let's try that out. Oh, I have an error. That's because I had deleted the variable image number, but I have still a an assignment here to image number. I don't need the image number anymore. I need to delete that as well. Compile this again and here we go. And I run this and try that out. Now every time <laughs> there's a circle getting caught on the edge. Um, every time I click I get randomly colored different sized, randomly sized, randomly s colored circles with somewhat random speeds. Try that out again. And there we go. That is our next step. Just one remark, writing all this code here into the constructor directly is not the nicest way to do that. In the next video I will clean that up a bit. But this is long enough for today. See you next time. Bye-bye.